Chairman Calvert, Ranking Member McCollum, distinguished members of the committee, thank you for your continued support and the opportunity to testify on the Space Force's posture for FY26. Never before in our history has space been more critical to the future of our nation. Satellites underpin our economic prosperity, enabling everything from transportation and communication to agriculture and finance. Space has likewise become the backbone of our national security. Today's Joint Force is built around the assumption that space power will be there when needed. GPS allows our forces to mass and maneuver fires. Satellite communications ensure global C2 of our operations. Satellites offer constant vigilance on the battlefield, alerting America's forces of missile launches and adversary action. All of these effects and more are provided by your U.S. Space Force. With about 3% of the DOD budget and less than 1% of the personnel, the Space Force is a great value proposition for the Department. For this tiny fraction of resources, you enable a service that has become indispensable for modern power projection. However, despite the dramatic rise in space threats and the increasing importance of space, over the last few budget cycles, the Space Force has experienced shrinking resources. This disconnect between value and investment creates risk for our nation. Further exacerbating the situation, the Space Force has been asked to accept new responsibilities and missions, forcing tough choices between delayed readiness, reduced capacity, or unaddressed vulnerabilities. To illustrate my point, in the past three years, the U.S. Space Force has been asked to take on new missions like ground and air moving target indicator, adding new space control capabilities and taking on additional responsibilities associated with modeling and simulation, force design analytics, and a threefold increase in launch tempo at our national spaceports and new advanced training requirements. These requirements have driven the need for increases in in-strength, military construction projects, new education and training curriculum, and expanded information technology requirements. The most recent addition to our mission set is the space-based technology associated with the Golden Dome program, which will depend heavily on Space Force sensors, interceptors, data fusion, communication capabilities. These are not modernization efforts or shifts from legacy missions, they represent new and emerging requirements for missions that have never been accomplished by a military space organization. These new mission areas will require new and stable resources over time to deliver. In FY26, we will have developed the blueprints, laid the foundational grant groundwork to continue these efforts in earnest. If the resources are made available, the Space Force will be postured to use them effectively in pursuit of these critical priority missions. Space gives us an incredible strategic advantage, but any advantage can become a vulnerability when held at risk. In, in the future, defending the homeland will demand that we first defend the satellites that make that defense possible. To be successful in this effort, we must be able to control the space. Protecting our capabilities in space while denying an adversary the ability to use space against us. That, in essence, is why you have a space force. It is the job of a military service to achieve superiority in the domain, and that's what we do for space. But if we want a space force that can secure our nation's interests in, from, and to space, we must resource it accordingly. In pursuit of this mission imperative, my priorities have remained consistent. Build comprehensive domain awareness, deploy resilient mission architectures, and develop the capacity to hold an adversary space assets at risk. To enhance our situational awareness, we are investing in additional sensors, data fusion capabilities, and the networks to rapidly put this information into decision makers' hands. To assure our missions are resilient to attack, we are investing in proliferated constellations, investing in launch infrastructure to ensure steady and cost-effective deployment of capabilities, and developing protective measures for our satellites and networks. And finally, to hold adversary space assets at risk, we are investing in counterspace systems designed to defeat any attempt to use space capabilities to target our forces or our homeland. Because of the work we have already done, additional resources given to the Space Force will enable accelerated delivery and expanded capacity in each of these areas. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the Space Force's FY26 posture. Our guardians stand at the forefront of the newest warfighting domain. With the support of this committee, I am confident the Space Force will hold the line and advance our national advantage in space. I look forward to your questions. Thank you.